Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, an iOS 18.3 released to the public this week and has been out for a few days. However, there's even more to talk about with new features, some Apple news updates, and the experience since the iOS 18.3 is out what's new video. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll. They've actually changed this from community to post just today, so be sure to check it out under posts now if you're not finding it. And at the time of this video, there's over 12,000 votes and 187 comments. I've gone through every comment to determine what the overall experience is like and what the actual percentage of improvement is as far as the battery life and more. And we'll read some of your comments toward the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. Now, the first thing I've been asked all week long is does TikTok get uninstalled when I update to iOS 18.3? And no, Apple does not uninstall any apps when you upgrade. If you were to fully restore the phone, completely wipe it, then you could uninstall it. However, you'll see I have it here. I actually have a TikTok channel as well, and you'll see that it's actually still here. So after installing iOS 18.3, it won't remove it at all. It works fine. I've been posting from it as well, and it's on all devices that still have it. It. So if you had it installed already, you'll still have it. Just don't delete it as you won't be able to get it back currently as it's not available in the US App Store. Outside of that, it should be available though. Now there's a new game that was released this week on Apple Arcade, or you can at least get it for now. You'll see PGA Tour Pro Golf. You can get it here if you want to play it sort of a triple A game that we have available now and they've made it available and they announced it in the Apple newsroom as well. Now, Apple this week also published a support document going over how to stop your MacBook with an Apple Silicon processor from turning on when you just open the lid. This is something that's never bothered me, but many people want to know how to do that, and Apple published the support document and how to do this using the terminal. So if you want a more in-depth video on how to do that, let me know in the comments below, but I actually leave it on all the time and rarely shut it down unless I'm traveling on a plane and need to put it in airplane mode or something like that. TV Plus this week actually announced that Major League Soccer will return to MLS season pass on Apple TV for its historic 30th season. So they've announced that it kicks off February 22nd through the 23rd, and you can see that in the TV Plus app as well. Now, many of you use WhatsApp for messaging over iMessages, and it's very important to update this week as it fixes some serious security issues. The security issues only seem to affect iPhone though, and are allowing anyone to sort of view ephemeral content. So if you go into the app store, there's additional features there as well. If we search for WhatsApp, so if we go to WhatsApp here, we can take a look at the features that they updated and you'll see it has a few different things such as you can now dial phone numbers without saving them to your contacts. You can now select participants prior to starting a group call and you can now add people you are chatting with to an ongoing call. So some nice updates there as well. Just make sure that you've updated this if you use it regularly. Now there's two possible security vulnerabilities in Apple chipsets according to students at Georgia Tech this week. The slap and flop issues can allow for malicious websites to spy on other web pages, credit card information, email, browsing history, and more. Apple actually responded to Bleeping Computer saying that they have not patched this yet and have said they don't believe that it actually poses an immediate risk. However, Apple will be patching this in the future, so we'll talk about what updates to expect in just a moment. As far as new features this week, well, I did want to mention that Starlink has been added to some T-Mobile phones in beta in iOS 18.3. I currently don't have this. I have a T-Mobile phone. I've signed up for it, but I don't have it just yet. But typically you'll have an option for it so you can actually use satellite Starlink to actually communicate to your phone when you don't have service. You can sign up for this, and I'll link this in the description, but you can sign up for it on T-Mobile's website. And it says T-Mobile and Starlink have teamed together providing satellite to mobile service in remote areas where tower signals can't reach. So again, you can sign up for it. I'll link it in the description if you wanna check it out yourself and you have T-Mobile in the United States. Now, many people last week had said that once they updated their AirPods to the latest beta firmware, they now have the option for hearing health maybe the hearing test specifically. So if we go into this, let's see if mine updated yet, and you'll see I'm on the current beta update of 7E67B. You need to have the developer mode enabled, which I do down here, plug in your phone, connect it to a Mac with Xcode, and then you can enable it, go all the way to the bottom where it says pre-release beta firmware, and then you can enable it on your device. Now, some that have enabled this and live in different countries where it's not supported yet are now seeing hearing options. So the hearing test option is showing up in Belgium and it seems like Australia at this point. So those particular areas are not yet supported. Local governments have to allow it. And it looks like that could be coming very soon. 
when it comes to iOS 18.3's features, one thing I didn't mention with the latest update, let's get out of that, is if we go into our wallpaper, if you're using the astronomy wallpaper, it's now centering the globe properly. Some people had a bug where it would sort of jump up and not work properly when they add widgets and more, or just jump around the screen. But it seems to be centered better in this particular update. Also, we've received specific feedback on one of the bug fixes you're definitely going to want to hear. We'll talk about that under the bug fix section though with iOS 18.3. As far as upcoming features, well, we do expect new emoji, possibly in iOS 18.4 betas. And according to 9to5Mac, we could get some major enhancements with screen recording, with stereo audio, HDR video, and picture in picture using the camera as an overlay as well. We should also be getting default maps and translation apps in the EU where you can change the defaults there and PayPal support I've talked about in Apple Wallet before. So all of those things are expected next. Apple intelligence is said to improve here in the next few versions, possibly with some Siri enhancements, image playground updates, also priority notifications we haven't seen yet. And we definitely could use some additional features, maybe some things we don't expect. I also wanted to talk about Apple intelligence just for a moment, because if you find that you don't use it, you can save a ton of storage on your device, go into settings, go to Apple intelligence and Siri, turn it off. And if you turn off Apple intelligence, it will recognize that after some time and actually delete the Apple intelligence files. So maybe you're struggling for some storage or you just don't want it in general, you can let it load and we'll talk about storage in a bit, but you'll see here, Apple intelligence, 5.84 gigabytes for the system data, but Apple intelligence is 6.26 gigabytes up to over seven gigabytes. Typically this will actually reduce over time and you won't take up all that storage, but it will take some time for it to actually come back. Now, as far as Apple intelligence goes, let me turn that back on. I haven't used it a ton and I asked a bunch of you how it's going as far as using Genmoji and more. So I did a poll on X and you'll see after 3,158 votes, only 8% of people seem to use it all the time. 37% used it once or twice and 55% never use it. Some because they don't support it and others just because they don't find it to be something useful. Now that's something that I think is probably less than I expected, but of course doesn't represent everyone using iOS, but in general, I think less people use it after they try it a few different times and maybe create a few emoji that they want. Now we are waiting for the next iPhones later this year. Apple's finalizing those designs and iPhone 17 air is expected to be super thin and thinner than this iPhone 16 plus Tim cook during the earnings call this week said, I think there's a lot of innovation left on the smartphone. Personally, I'm hoping this means it's not just thinness, but is more something unexpected, or maybe they think a fold is innovation like that. I'm not really sure what they're thinking there, but hopefully we have some surprises in the near future. Also with the iPhone SE four, it's expected to have a notch again, instead of just a dynamic Island. So there was some information about that this week where they're going to replace the SE three with an SE four that looks more similar to the iPhone 14, but with a singular camera, and then basically has a notch like we already have and basically the same sort of frame. So we'd have our volume buttons, maybe an action button, but we wouldn't have anything such as a dynamic Island or a camera control option. So either way, we'll have to wait and see, but it seems likely fairly soon to see one of those. So we'll probably see that within the next month or two. Of course, iOS 19 is what Apple's probably working on most at this point, and hopefully it gets some of the redesigns we've heard from John Prosser about maybe a camera redesign. I've talked about a little bit and maybe an overall change, maybe to sort of represent what we have with vision pro, but we don't know that a hundred percent. When it comes to releases, well, iOS 18.3.1 is possible to patch that security issue I mentioned before. We could see that in the next few weeks. We don't know for sure. And then iOS 18.4 beta one should release probably any day now, maybe Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. We didn't see it this week, so it seems likely that it would be early next week. It's possible they're going to skip a few weeks, but that seems more likely than not. Now iOS 17.7.2 is still a great experience for many people making many people stay on iOS 17 instead of upgrading to iOS 18. However, I am seeing more and more people move over as it seems to be more stable. Some people that have moved over recently that I have in my telegram channel have actually said that it's very smooth and better than they expected. So that's good news, but Apple did release iPad OS 17.7.4 this week, but still no updates for prior phones. For some reason they will be behind in security updates. And I really wish Apple would make that available to download and then downgrade your phone with. But at this point, it looks like they're done with that.
Now, Apple finally nailed battery life in this update. It's exceptional as far as what many people are saying. And for the vast majority of users, that's after just a few days that they're saying it's so good. I went through every comment and not everyone has the same opinion, but I went through every comment in the YouTube community poll and 84% of people said it was the same or better. Most people said it was better than iOS 18.2.1 or any prior version. Only 16% said it was worse. This is much higher numbers than we've seen in the past and looks like it's going to be a great update. And the reason I mentioned this specifically is, as I mentioned earlier, we have feedback that Cameron sent over. He actually specifically got from Apple. It says, hi, Cameron, changes have been released in iOS and iPadOS 18.3 build 22D63 that should have addressed this issue. If you are still experiencing this behavior, please submit a fresh report so we can continue to investigate. And it's specifically for battery drain. So this is something I just blacked out what we had as far as the overall feedback numbers and his personal information, but this is great news and many people report that they have indeed fixed it. So again, I think they nailed it with this update and finally fixed the issue with battery. For those of you still having an issue with it, either do a reboot or give it a few more days and it should improve. As far as bugs and bug fixes, well, they fixed the touchscreen bug for me. I've had no issues with that. And also the keyboard issues people were having. I've heard very few people complain about that now. And that means if we go into notes and when you're typing, some people complain that it was slow. So this is a new note and it seems to keep up just like you would expect. That's even on older phones as well. So I know some people were concerned there. If we go in and say, hi, this is a new note. It seems to keep up. It just doesn't have ProMotion, so it's not as smooth. And you'll see it's actually recording what I'm saying as I was using voice dictation there. Now, there are still a few other issues that do show up. So they fixed the camera, they fixed the touchscreen bug, but the camera going black is sometimes still there. So you could unlock your phone, go into the camera right away, and sometimes it would just be a black display. I had this happen to me personally the other day on iOS 18.3's public release. So it's definitely an issue. Sometimes you won't go into it and it's just a black display. You have to physically go in, close the app, go back in, and then it works again. So I've only seen that once, but it did come back. Also the wallpaper saturation bug is still there. So look at the wallpaper here on the lock screen. As I scroll home, it seems to desaturate. Now, prior to this, it would resaturate or saturate more than what we had on the lock screen. So it's definitely an odd issue. It goes back and forth. I'm not sure why that's a difficult thing to solve, but maybe there's more to it than we realize. Some people were also saying there's some micro stutters and I wanted to bring up a bug that people have been facing for a long time, specifically with the camera on older devices. So if we go into the camera, go to video, and maybe we start recording in one times or one X, we'll put this phone behind here, try to go to 0.5 and sometimes it works fine. Other times it doesn't work at all. So sometimes you could go into this, maybe we'll close out of the camera app. We'll close out, go back in. Sometimes when you go in and record video, you'll tap this and it won't work. And then you get the dial where you can sort of zoom out, but then other times it works fine. So I'm not sure what the difference is there, but if we go into 4K, we'll do 4K 60, again, do this. And now it doesn't work. So it looks like it's only in 1080p that it's working or it's just a bug or something they overlooked. But I wanted to bring it up, see if that's something you have experienced or if you haven't at all. Now, when it comes to battery life, I've been using this full time on my phone, but wanted to take a look at someone else that's been using it full time. So if we take a look at that, thanks to Abishek for sending this along. This is on an iPhone 11 Pro Max with 77% battery health. So not that great, but you'll see six hours and three minutes of screen on time, 31 minutes of screen off time and used under 100% of the battery. You'll see here's where it was charged again and used over 100%, but again, got eight hours and 48 minutes. I would say about seven hours or so on that device is pretty phenomenal with 77% battery health. As far as my device, if we go into settings, we'll go back to battery here, battery health. I have 100% after 118 cycles. You can see more details about it here with coconut battery. And if we take a look at my battery life over the last 10 days, yesterday I used about 60% of my battery and had four hours and 12 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 43 minutes of screen idle time. Today, two hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, and I'm down to 68%. 
While I was traveling, I was using the release candidate. It was pretty good. And you'll see prior to this, I was using far more power to get just to four and a half hours. So it looks like it's improving greatly for me over time and definitely seems better than it was. As far as performance, I did mention that a little bit before where it seems to be generally smooth. Some people do see micro stutters. You may have noticed that when I went into the camera and then closed it out before there was a little bit of a stutter when I was going through that, but in general, it seems to be pretty smooth and that includes pro motion ramping up and down and the animation speeds. They may not be as fast as some other phones, but the overall speed feels nice and fast. If we go into it, you'll see things load nice and quickly, even on the iPhone 11 on the same Wi-Fi connection, just in general, if we go into maybe the camera and quickly snap a photo, it seems to be fine. So it's performing much better. And I really think they nailed it again. Like I mentioned before. When it comes to heat, well, the phone is heating up a little bit, but it's not hot. And I've seen reports from many of you saying that it's staying mostly cool, except for when charging, which is completely normal for it to heat up when charging. Let's take a look. Both of these are running iOS 18.3. I've been using this one during the video. This one's just sitting idle. So let's take a look at it with the thermal camera. On the 16 Pro Max that I've been showing you in the video, it's at about 35 degrees Celsius compared to the one sitting at idle with the screen on is at about 29 degrees Celsius. So again, a little bit warm, not too hot, but I did process quite a few things before the video, trying benchmarks and more. As far as the overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those. Now, all of these are running iPad OS 18.3 or iOS 18.3. We have the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch, the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. We have some of the best scores we've seen on the 16 Pro Max with 3,508 for single core, 8,708 for multi-core. If we take a look at what we had before, it's a little bit higher than when I had iOS 18.2.1 as far as both single and multi-core by one point in single core, more on multi-core, but in general it's performing well and that's what you would expect to see with benchmarks as well. So all within the margin of error, the same is true with the iPhone 11 and the iPad. They're all better than 18.2.1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at your comments and see what you had to say. Anuj Anand of 03 said, running iOS 18.3 on my 15 Pro Max and the experience is great. Everything looks and feels as it was during 17.7 times, smooth and responsive. Willie Seth 740 said, for the first time since iOS 17.7, I can say that my 15 Pro Max feels like the phone I once had. Great battery life, no touch issues, no heating, no glitches whatsoever. Finally, a decent update that fixed some of my issues. Google Myths said, iOS 18.3 has been an exceptional update, offering improved battery life, enhanced responses, and significantly faster performance. However, I continue to express my desire for Apple to enhance the intelligence capabilities of more of its devices. Bart Cohunter said, after updating to iOS 18.3 battery life on my small iPhone 16 Pro, that went from great to amazing. Six hours of screen on time and still 51% battery left at the end of the day. I am shocked. All this with normal usage, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, to and from the job, etc. Manual brightness set to around 80%, always on display with wallpaper turned on. Highland Persuasion said, bought my iPhone in December of last year, so I have experienced both iOS 18.2 as well as 18.3 in their respective iterations. So far, this has been the most stable and consistent the battery life has been. Elizabeth Kierville 8289 said, running 18.3 on my iPhone 11, and it seems to have settled down after a bit of noticeable battery drain for the first day no heat issues and now running smoothly and battery is great. Now, as far as anything else, well, it seems like this is a pretty decent update. So the verdict on whether or not you should install iOS 18.3, if you haven't already, well, battery life seems to be fixed, not just based on experience, but based on what Apple has said as well. It's not going to be the same for every single person, but in general, it's much better. And like I mentioned before, I think Apple nailed it with this update. They listened to feedback about battery. There's still a little ways to go, but it's much better. I think than iOS 17.3 last year at the same time. Of course, we're waiting for iOS 19, and that's where we'll see hopefully some stability improvements and more in June at WWDC. So that's everything with iOS 18.3. We'll look for iOS 18.4 hopefully next week with the first beta. And if you found any additional features or changes or just had a different experience, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.